Hi friends, welcome to Project Time. In this video, I want to show you how you can build this powerful variable switching power supply. It is actually a DC to DC buck converter. I designed it from scratch using Altium Designer. And if I show you the bare PCB board, I mean the board without any component, this is the top side, this is the bottom side. I sent the Gerbers to PCB way. And this is the results. The quality is pretty nice. I highly recommend you to use this PCB design if you want to build this circuit because I have followed some PCB design rules that is necessary for this circuit. This is the input connector. You can apply up to 40 volts to the input. And this is the output connector. You can draw up to 30 amps. To, uh, from the output and this potentiometer, multi-turn potentiometer is used to adjust the output voltage. This is the MOSFET driver chip and this is the controller chip and these two are power MOSFETs. Don't forget to mount a heatsink for these MOSFETs. However, the body of the MOSFETs should be electrically isolated from each other. So you're going to use some something like a thermal pad behind, behind each MOSFET. However, the ring around the screw is plastic. So this is a good thing. So you're gonna, you don't need to use a plastic washer for this. So it is easier to electrically isolate this type of MOSFET. Uh, I have calculated for, uh, these two inductors to handle up to 30 amps. This is the switching inductor and this is uh, the output inductor uh, which act as an LC filter. So this is the switching inductor, the main inductor of the circuit and you can see I have used five one millimeter wires in parallel to handle such current, such a current, okay? I think it is enough for the introduction. In the next step, I will go through the schematic and PCB, and then I will test the circuit using a DC load and an oscilloscope. So stay tuned. All right, this is the Altium Designer environment. If you don't have the Altium on your computer, there is a link in the YouTube video description that allows you to download the latest version of the Altium and activate it with a free legal license. When you activate your legal license, you will see your name here, the same as me. And the latest version so far is 22.9. I see several nice tutorials here. I will check later on. Let's go to the schematic. This is the schematic diagram. And this is the PCB layout. As you know, with each project, I also publish an article. So instead of elongating the video and explaining the schematic just visit the article link in the youtube video description i have explained the schematic in details in the article so i just skip that and go to the pcb as it is clear this is a two layers pcb board red is the top layer and blue is the bottom layer and i have used a mixture of smd and true hole components to design the pcb layout I've used uh, three techniques in this PCB. The first one is, uh, as you see, each connector input and output has four pins. So why? I decided to use two wires instead of one thick wire for each polarity. So for example, instead of using one thick three millimeters wire, you will use two one and a half millimeter wires in parallel. This is a technique. Uh, that sometimes is used uh, to handle high currents. Uh, I believe uh, using two wires like this is better because one thick wires, one thick wire must uh, impose stress on the connector and handling or bending this wire is much more difficult. So in, when you build this, just use two one and a half millimeter wires in parallel for each uh polarity i mean two wires for a positive 
two wires for negative input or the ground and the same for the output connector two two the second point is that these wires in the switching power supply like this the length of the ground path should be as short as possible and these wires allows or uh, minimize the ground path in the PCB and this is very important in the noise reduction okay the third point is that high current carrying tracks or the copper areas that might carry a high amount of current should have bigger clearance let me tell you what I mean do you see this clearance is higher than the clearance between this track if I go to the top, do you see that the clearance between this track and the copper is much lower than here? Because why? This track carry a high amount of current. And this is IPC standard because as I said, this track, especially for example, this copper carry 30 amps and the clearance between this track or the copper area uh, naturally should not be identical with the digital input and output for example the digital controlling of the gate pin I mean the uh, gate driver so of course the clearance is should not be identical I have implemented this in the rules section if I go to the rules and as you see I have defined the high current nets and defined uh, 0.8 millimeter clearance for this specific ne specific nets and the rest of the nets just have 0.3 millimeter clearance okay so this is a method that you should follow if you deal with high currents high current tracks and high current applications when you want to find information about your electronic components just don't use google this Octopart website is much faster than Google. Let me show you how it works. Do you remember the power component or the power MOSFET of the project IRFP064? Now I press enter. Just look at the speed. One, two, three. Did you see that? Blink of eye. Much faster than Google. From the search results, I liked this one from Vishay. And there we go everything is in front of our eyes this is the inventory status the price of the component in a variety of distributors of course authorized distributors inventory on the chart and this is the footprint and 3d model of the components which is available in in these two sources and there we go uh, useful information from the data sheet this is the package type and the continuous drain current 70 amp amps and the drain to source resistance is 9 milliohms. very nice apart from this if you like you can use this tool let me show you this BOM tool means bill of material you can use quickly you can use this tool to quickly build the bill of material for your project whatever you see on this website is free just don't miss that bookmark this website and have fun hello and welcome back to the test bench i have prepared everything to run the experiment siglent sdl 1020 dc load sdm 30 45 x multimeter and STS2102X plus oscilloscope let me show you the board itself so this is the board input and output wires I have not mounted a heatsink on the power MOSFETs because I will just run a short test and, I, they are, and these MOSFETs are powerful enough to handle high current for a short time and this is my old power supply unfortunately it can handle up to 30 amps so i set the output voltage to 30 volts which is the maximum for this power supply then 
I set the output voltage of the board to around 3 volts. So the maximum input and uh, minimum output from the board allows me to draw up to 18 amps. However, as I said, this is my limitation. You can draw up to 30 amps from this board. However, my experiment, my experiment and test setting does not allow me to go higher than 18 amps. Before I continue and run the experiment, I should remind you, although these output wires are thick enough and they can easily handle the current, however, they will also introduce some voltage drop. Therefore, the manufacturer of this DC load has introduced a feature that I can use another two wires from the backside of the DC load and use them to read the voltage because if it reads the voltage just from here, it's not accurate because it reads the voltage after this, after the voltage drop on the wires. But because I also have this multimeter, so I use this multimeter to separately read the output voltage and show it on the big screen of the multimeter. Let me put the multimeter probes on the output. So it says 3.4 volts. Let me apply the 18 amps load. So the voltage drops and uh, drops to 3.3 volts which is very good. Why? Because the majority of this drop is just because of the because of using an LC filter at the output. And I prefer to have lower noise at the output and tolerate 100, 120 milliamps drop at 18 amps. 120 milliamps is nothing for 18 amps. So in the next step, I will use the oscilloscope to read the output noise under 18 amps of load. Okay, to capture the oscilloscope screen clearly, I adjusted the exposure of the camera. Then I activated the power analysis feature of the oscilloscope, then set the bandwidth limit on 20 MHz, and then set the probe on times 10. After that, I put the ground spring on the head of the probe. Now I will put the probe on the output of the power supply and apply 18 amps load to the output. All right, the measurement says the peak to peak noise is around 50 millivolts and the RMS noise is around four millivolts, which is very good indeed for a switching power supply. As I said, I prefer to have a low noise at the output and tolerate a little bit of uh, a voltage drop at the output. And if you remember, for 18 amps, the output voltage drop was around 120 millivolts. Anyway, I hope you liked this video and built this project and have fun. Don't forget to share and subscribe. Give me a big thumbs up like this. See you in the next video.